Thanks to uh, James Doolan there for joining us. Um, I was good talking with a head coach. Gives you that different um, dynamic. and yeah. You know, yeah. I keep saying it today. Peek behind the curtain. Yeah. Um, Rob, start spreading the news. Sure. UFC 230 New York goes down this weekend. Daniel Cormier taking on the black beast Derek Lewis. Have you seen his balls are hot t-shirts? No, I haven't actually. Rogan was wearing one on the uh, J. Of course he was. Yeah. Brilliant. I should get one. Strike while the balls are hot, <laughs> I could say. Um, but is yeah, that, is that what it says on the... No, it just says, uh, my balls are hot. Oh, right. I, t- I think it says, uh, I understand or something. I'm not too sure. Go. Cool. Uh, Daniel Cormier taking on Derek Lewis is the main event for the mm. UFC heavyweight strap. Short notice fight for Derek Lewis. Yes. Um, quick turnaround. It was only, what, three weeks ago? Yeah. That he fought... Alexander mm. Volkov um, in a fight that he was losing he was losing he was on his way and to he was taking defeat. some damage yeah and with 11 seconds to go flatlined uh, Volkov and got the victory and then came out with that glorious my balls are hot yeah. um, line but Daniel Cormier is taking this fight in short notice openly said he was taking this to save the card and he wouldn't be taking this fight at short notice if it was against Stipe yeah so he was like, Derek is a sort of one-dimensional style of fighter. A little bit of yeah. that. I don't think he meant I was, it in a See, I was, think, I was thinking about this one because that kind of put me off a little bit because as in like, is Daniel Cormier focused for this? But to be honest, I think it's coming from more of a perspective of Daniel Cormier just being a really good analyst mm. and he's being truthful to his audience, I guess, if you want to put it that way, where he did assess the situation. He looked at Derek Lewis. I don't think he's underestimating. I just mm. think he has had like a deep dive into his skills and thinks, okay, here's what I think of him. And generally, Cormier is right with his assessment of, you know, fighters. So um, I don't, I'm, I'm not taking that away from him. I don't think he's underestimating Lewis, personally. Okay. Um, yeah. With the fight, yes. is it to go on the other side, is it too short notice for Derek Lewis? Now, he has so, yeah. he has spoke about, you know, he thinks Stipe should be getting the shot. But look, this was offered to him. He's not going to turn this down. Yeah. But is it too much short notice? He this, said openly he doesn't train that much. Yeah. This and is this is lining up uh, perfectly for, you know, the like the James Gallagher one where he was talking shit to, it's not, not the exact same thing, but he was talking shit. Then somebody made like a meme of it. Mm-hmm. And like when, you know, cockiness backfires. This could be like when like truthfulness yeah. backfires. You'll have Derek Lewis coming out and saying, I'm not taking a title shot. I need cardio. And then you'll probably have Derek Lewis tiring out and losing a title fight mm. three weeks later. Um, just, so for, yeah. just for what it's the similar. bookmakers think, paddypower.com mm. Good have site. Daniel Cormier as one to seven mm. and they have Derek Lewis as four to one. So that means for the American viewers, I never do know this over under plus, malarkey. Plus 300, um, plus 500. Derek Lewis, if those. you were to put $10 on Derek Lewis, you would get back 50 bucks. Yeah, 50 bucks. Yeah. So normally bookmakers, you know, they come up with these odds because, you know, they're right. Yeah, they, But they as we've seen and then, yeah. in the last couple of UFC shows, uh, Alan Patrick stands out to me. Um, Don Maj, who did he beat the weekend? Yeah. Uh, he was a huge underdog. He got it happens all the time in yeah, MMA, and, and sometimes it happens. Heavyweights, yeah, and sometimes it happens in this situation where you have somebody coming in short notice, and everyone's saying, "Ah, no, it's not going to happen," and then it does. So I don't think you can count out Lewis, especially as you said, a heavyweight. Now Cormier is arguably better a heavyweight. Like he has has a better record at heavyweight. Unbeaten at least. A heavyweight. He's unbeaten a heavyweight. Of course, you can say, "Well, is he coming up against the best guys, or is he coming up with against the same type of guys that he was at light heavyweight?" That's an argument, but. Um, I don't think you can look past Cormier winning this, personally. I think, you know, skill-wise, he's there. If he's, you know, even 80%, 70%, I think he still wins it. Um, but Lewis, we've seen it. We've seen it against Volkov. We've seen it against a lot of guys where he just lands a shot at the end. And Cormier has been finished. He's finished by John Jones with a head kick. Cormier, uh, Derek Lewis is not going to throw a head kick. but Derek Lewis has thrown a head kick. He kicks. has thrown a head kick. So he probably will now. Um, but... You can't look past Cormier in this one. Is he gonna? Is Cormier gonna be in the same way when he fought Anderson Silva? He was very strategical that he didn't want to get involved in the feet. So are we gonna see that? I'd yes, it's short now his fight. So I'm gonna go back to basically got what my, got me to where I am mm. in my skill set, and that's my wrestling. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Um, you'd have to imagine so, especially when Lewis has shown 
on the floor, at least when he's tired. Like, when he's not tired, he does these mad things where he comes against good grapplers and he just blasts out of... Like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Yeah. So, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened, but you'd have to imagine after a round, a round and a half of Cormier grinding on looking for takedowns. Um, and Cormier's a good striker as well. Corm- Corm- Cormier has been finished a couple of occasions he has, as well yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. so now so, like the thing is uh, talking as you do amongst people are going oh you know um, Anthony Johnson couldn't finish him do you know what I mean landed some big shots on him do you know what I mean and mm. they go they start giving you a list and then you, you have the account MMA list the, John Jones yeah MMA mats but John Jones finished him with the head kick you know he said finished a couple of times yeah, it was once since had, John Jones well no uh, yeah well Anthony yeah, yeah. But he's been he was rocked. clocked yeah he was clocked Anderson Silva hurt him yeah, he was a glorified middleweight going. Up. I'm trying to play devil's advocate no, yeah, of yeah. how. No, hundred percent. So I think people are coming and we're going. No, what are you talking about? Talk Cormier's daddy. Yeah, yeah. I like Cormier, big Cormier fan, but a big fucking Derek Lewis fan as well. Yeah. So from the fan side, of it, like me, yes, the odds are right for me in skill set against skill set. I don't think Daniel Cormier is underestimating Derek Lewis, but I, you know, if we're here next week on MMA on points, obviously Fight Talk podcast talking about this and we're talking about holy shit Derek Lewis knocked out Daniel yeah. Cormier I'm not going to be surprised I'm not surprised motherfucker um, no either will I like I will be surprised in a moment I'll be like yes. holy yes. shit he did it but like no he can win like he can mm. land the shot they're heavyweights um, yeah. but yeah pick Daniel Cormier by second round rear naked choke yeah I think it's, it's submission something like that well. yeah like yeah something like that toward round for me yeah. Late toward. Mm. Lewis just has that way. Let's unmic um, yeah. the young man. Unmic? From unmute the young man <laughs> from Cavan off camera. Sean, welcome to your first pick. Make it right. <laughs> Derek Lewis, Daniel Cormier. What you got? Thanks, Noel. Uh, the fun money, I think, is going to be on Derek Lewis. Ooh, um, I already like shows and as Sean yeah. as an addition to the show. Yeah, yeah. There's Go no the fun one. back in Daniel Comey out no. one to seven. Mm. So my money's on Derek Lewis by KO an even bigger price. Ooh. First hey, round? Are you gonna go first round? Uh we'll go second round. Oh. Second round KO. Conservative Sean. <laughs> <laughs> He's only gonna knock him yeah. out. Yeah, only when I built him up about oh yeah, great It's stuff, yeah, Sean. to be honest, it's throw money on it, why not? Like throw a fiver on it. Throw a ten yes. on it. Like yes. Why not? Throw a f- look. Peter Casey in the presidential election here yeah. in Ireland went from 501 to 8 to 1. Yeah. They lost. <laughs> but it was great crack watching it go down. Um, that doesn't help the argument at all. So <laughs> I'm am, I am Daniel Cormier. Sorry, Derek. I love you. Yeah. You know, we go deep. You know, he, you know, we saw something now. I just got to do a number two. He had great mm. lines. Great lines before. My, <laughs> you know what I mean? My balls are hot. But uh, yeah, you got to be looking at the champion here. Brock Lesnar's in... in the further away view will that I ever think, happen I don't I know don't, I just think Daniel Cormier is, is too good of a professional to look there's, past um, the danger that is Derek Lewis there's rumours that uh, Brock Lesnar might be showing up I heard um, yeah he said he'll slap him in the face if he gets into the yeah, cage yeah. don't do that nice don't look things have simmered down here in Ireland about unprofessionalism and, and tugs <laughs> let's not be slapping each other yeah. in the cage your boy's so, up next so Sean is going second round knockout mm. Daniel Cormier your guy our Derek Lewis, you're yeah. going... Cormier, round two. two. RNC. Mm. Chris Weidman. Your boy. <laughs> against uh, Jacques Ray is your co-main event. Yeah. A late addition to the card because uh, the gorgeous... The handsome. Um, Luke Rockhold fell out. Um, he... What did they say? Multiple injuries, didn't they? Did the injury come out? What he injured? Um, he got like a surgery or something that went wrong. Wasn't worst, it? Worst nightmare. Imagine getting a surgery that went wrong. Something like that, yeah. Like, doctor, you've one job. Yeah, you know just I mean? do the surgery. Just do it correctly. It's like, imagine, like, it's like getting post and then the postman like leaving outside or something. Yeah. Be weird, wouldn't it? Inside joke. <laughs> uh, yeah, Weidman though, um, in a way, is oh. this a harder style matchup for Chris Weidman? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Um, look, I think Chris Weidman, if I'm honest... Apart from his last fight where I thought he looked impressive, yeah. he hasn't looked great. He just hasn't. And, and You're only as good as your last fight, so as you as said he looked fight. great in his he last looked, fight. He looked really good against Kelvin Gastelum, yeah. and I think that's a weird one because 
I don't know how to play that one because Kelvin Gastelum has like you can say oh well Kevin Ka- Kelvin Gastelum was a smaller guy yeah. but he just went there and he beat um, Jack Array yeah. um, so MMA great, match doesn't here. It? so it doesn't work as we know yeah. so like you can't really look at that and say well you know of course Chris won because he was the bigger guy Jack Array was the bigger guy and he lost so yeah. I think Wyman still has the skills there. He looked great in that fight. But against Musasi, didn't look great. It, it was a bit of a weird one. Um, against Yal Romero again, didn't look great. Luke got cold. Yeah, he looked good in the fourth round. That was more competitive than people remember. Like, it was the the, the second round and the, the third, I think it was the third round, the fourth round. Boy, was it? When he, yeah. He, he, what did he do? He done the spin, spin and back fist, and, I think yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, cost the fight. He was winning the fight. It. Yeah, he, he didn't look great there. But it was a competitive yeah, fight up there. Yal Romero knee, holy fuck. But for me, it's just... a. I know that he had that fight, the Kelvin Gastelum one, but there's just something about that fight where people are almost writing it off because of Gastelum's size, which I think is wrong, but I I can see where they're coming from. Do you almost think as well the UFC would have been in New York because Chris Weidman worked so hard when he was the champion at the time to get the UFC to New York that they wanted to have a win in New York? Probably. I said yeah. New York loads there. They did, yeah, it was weird. Yeah. Proper yeah. loads. <laughs> <laughs> they might want them to have a win in New York because like, he's from New York. He's a New Yorker. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but Jack Array as well, he's coming off a loss, isn't he? That's, yeah, yeah. He's coming off the... the, the, yeah, the Kelvin Gastelum. Yeah, which was a phenomenal performance as well. Mm. This is a weird fight. I don't know. I yeah. Like, on the feet, I think it's competitive. Mm. But to be honest... Jack Array's, Jack Array, Jack Array's stand-up is underestimated, isn't it? Everybody, under- everybody just thinks he takes you down. Yeah, and yeah, all, yeah. All this malarkey no, starts. Jack Array looks good in the yeah, feet. Yeah, he does, like, yeah. That head kick over Derek Brunson, who, you know, Derek Brunson, we'll talk about him a bit later. Yeah, um, getting whooped. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I just think this is a really weird fight. It's a really hard one to call. Like, I think this is probably harder to call than Luke Rockhold and Chris Weidman, even That's though, same thing. I don't how know I opened the fight. segment. That's how I opened it. Yeah, you think it's more a difficult fight for him? Mm. I'm going to go Jack Array. I think, I think on the feet, I think it's competitive, but I think Jack Array is, will be able to edge it slightly. On the floor, again, if Weidman's on top, he can do work. But when do we ever see Jack Array on his back? And even if he's on his back, he's good at sweeping, good at getting back to his feet. So I just think it's going to be a close decision win for Jack Ray Souza. But it's a, it's a really tough one. It's a really tough one. Yeah. And I don't disagree with what you're saying. Like, it's, I can see that. Mm. But, like, you're not going to get me picking against Chris Weidman. I know that. Um, like, Weidman's stand-up has evolved. He's got better and better. He utilises, uh, he uses nice elbows. Like little yeah. Step Remember the elbows. elbow against Mark Mark Munoz. Munoz. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> it was like, oh! Oh, yeah, look at him. Yeah, yeah. Is he all right? He's, yeah. he's up now. Grand, because he was, Munez was out for a long time. Yeah. Remember And the blood was literally... That was graphic. Don't him. show Joe Roddy that. Um, but yeah, Kelvin Gastelum, uh, arm triangle choke. Yeah, happy days. So I think, you know, Weidman is well versed on the ground. I don't think he's to the level of Jacare. He's a different style. But yeah, I think, I think if he's in the top position, he can use that... And not get caught in submissions that way. If he's stuck on the bottom, like, yeah. If he's yeah. stuck on the bottom, he's gonna find it difficult to get up from underneath. Jacare, you have seen what um, Luke Rockhold done when he got him on the floor. Like that's not saying that Chris Weidman couldn't have done stuff because he took some damage, but you could see when Rockhold took his back and he was landing shots. It wouldn't surprise me if he got to a similar situation with Jacare. Like Jacare is the elite of elite yeah. of grapplers. He's won the um, the the world championship so many times. Beat Roger Gracie. Beat so many good guys. So. I don't know. I, I just feel this one is for Jack Array. And again, it's it's a short notice fight for both, but they're both in camp. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go with Wyman. Split yeah. decision. Nice. Unmute Sean. Sean. <laughs> I'm going with Jack Array split decision. <sighs> I like this boy. I don't, know, I don't like this two to one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> a trend fan, going I'm on here. I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, I can't disagree with it. You know, sometimes when I make picks, and it tends to happen when Conor McGregor is fighting, mm. it's because you're a fan of said mm. fighter. Mm. So it, it happens, and I'm a f- big fan of Chris Wyman. And I'm a I, heartless I, motherfucker. I was on the train when he said everybody get on the train. I was like, yeah, the train's going to be full, Chris. We can't be letting too many I people I genuinely thought you were talking about an actual train for a minute. <laughs> no. Really did. When you he said, said, I was on the train, I was like, oh, I did train. No, when he was, a, yeah. when he, it was actually his last title defense, he was like, look, yeah, yeah. you know, the train's nearly full now, you got to get on the train and we're not accepting anymore, you know, just get up, get up behind Chris Wyman. And yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Very unfortunate as well in some of his fights, to be fair. Yeah. You know? Yeah, some of his fights are, 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 are peculiar losses. Yes. Um, Dave Branch is yeah. on the card. This was one of the switcheroos. Dave Branch was originally due to fight Jacare, Jacare, and now he's fighting Gerard Canier. Um, 
Branch again. One of these Branch is one of the guys that almost, yeah, he almost, isn't he? And but you were excited when he moved over to the UFC yes. as well from World Series of Fightings, which yeah. is now PFL. PFL. Um, and again, he came in. He, he beat uh, Christoph Jotko in mm-hmm. a split decision, which was close. Then he lost to Luke Rockhold. No uh, shame in that. And then he looked good against Thiago Santos. Yeah. So this now is Dave Branch. He's got to get that momentum going, hasn't he? And he was brilliant on uh, the MMA era when it was Ariel Hawani. He's a yeah. real brutally honest guy. Like if he thinks you're a cunt, he will tell you yeah. you're a. And cunt. he did. Yeah, he yeah. did tell him. Yeah, J- uh, Dave Branch is an excellent fighter. He's really, really good. But he was the bridesmaid. I was the bridesmaid. That's your. I was the bridesmaid. Yeah, he Never. really, he really is that though. If you look at his record, and you look who he's lost to, so mm. you have Gerald Harris. Who Gerald Harris had a good run in the UFC when he was there. Um, that was that slam. He lost to him. Then had some wins in between. Um, then he fought again. Then lost to Paul Harris again. Another name who was pretty good yeah. in the UFC. Then lost Anthony Johnson. Decent Again, guy, yeah. another, Decent and guy, then yeah. lost to Luke Rockhold. That was his next yeah. loss. So he's only losing to really good guys. So when he was matched up with Jackeray, it was another one of them attempts for him to say, "Okay, let's see if I can get past this guy." Yeah. Now he's coming up against a guy with Cannonier who is like similar to Dave Branch, as in they're they're good everywhere. Um, pretty decent hands and decent in, grappling but in the but same not as good. flip side argument maybe not the bigger names but Dominic Reyes he lost it Reyes looked fantastic in his last yeah, game yeah. Jan and Jan Blakovich and Glover yeah so t- his three losses have come against you know yeah so they're, they're similar enough uh, in a similar enough position as in they're looking to kind of break through that glass ceiling um, but I just think that Dave Branch is the better fighter here yeah, I really do I he agree. has good hands Um has some really good wins, better wins, uh, and that's not always how it works. But mm. even Jerry Cannon, his last couple of losses, I think this is a bad fight from coming into this one. Huge if he wins it, but I think it's a bad matchup for him. I think uh, Dave Branch all day here for me. All day, all day, every, every day. day. Yeah, I except can. for Saturdays. Except. I mean, it's on Saturdays. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> Yeah, Dave Branch for me here is taking this. Uh, he looked good. He looked in the um, Luke Rockhold fight. I think. He showed too much respect to Luke Rockhold a little bit. I wouldn't bit. say nervous, but I think maybe it's just yeah. that. He was, yeah, yeah. He backed off a little bit. A little um, bit, and that's not his style. No. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to... Uh, Thiago Santos, he came out and he looked great. Yeah. So, yeah, i got to say... He's ha- on a good run. Yeah, yeah and Santos. momentum. I, always say, I know it's your only as good as your last fight now, but momentum is such a big thing. And you got to think Jared here is looking at Roy with two losses. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and two losses used to mean walking papers, which is unfair to you, I'd say. Yeah. But three losses means, you know what I mean? <laughs> Fucking don't even look at Sean Shelby in the eye. Like, don't even pop him a text for a week. Do you know what I mean? Like, unless it's a it super happen. close fight, yeah, yeah. Avoid at all costs. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's unmute the uh, young man from Cavan, Sean. Uh, I'm going with Branch as well. I've seen some quotes from him on, I think it was either the MMA oh, or Ari show. He, uh, he said that he wasn't surprised when he seen Rockhold get pulled, that his fight then got pulled. So I think he's going to want to mm. vent a little bit. Mm. Prove a point. It's good. Look at us bringing data it, to the show. Yeah, Jesus. Mm. Mm. It's, in a way, it's... Um, it's a, it's a weird one where the UFC, it's something we've spoke about before. I always know when Rob's trying to hire me, he starts filling with him when I get close to the mic <laughs> now. Um, sometimes they're doing this, they're putting guys that are the same weight class further down the card so they can, if yeah, sh- yeah. you know. It makes sense, you know, yeah. especially lower down the card. I have a problem with it when it's the main event, personally, but yeah, when it's down the card, it's fine. Carl Robertson takes yeah. on Jack Marsden. A little bit of Welch interest in this one. Mm. What are we thinking, Roberto? This is a tough one because I think they're very well matched. Uh, Marshman obviously has a lot more experience, but I think they're two good strikers um, who have had a you know pretty decent run in the UFC. Have have some good like losses against or at least Marshman has losses against good guys like Shoeface, you know, tough fight, mm. and uh, Santos tough fight. Um, so I think this is going to be a really exciting one. It's going to be on the fee. I think slightly. You'll have Carl Robertson, the slightly better striker overall. I think he uses kicks better. Marshman likes to use his hands too much. Um, not too much, but at least more than... Um, I'd like to say mix it up more, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but he has the more experience as well, Marshman, so I'm not really sure. Again, this is a, a well-matched fight, uh, but Carl Robertson, I feel, is just a slightly better striker. We could see some takedowns on both sides. Um, both guys have submissions, but I feel like they want to test each other on the feet because they are strikers, and they've come against guys who would like to take them down in the past. So um, I feel it's going to be a striker match, and I feel Robertson is just that little bit better um, overall as a, a striker. Are you going finish, or are you going? No. 
decision. Hmm. So, if you want to tune in for a long 15 minute fight, good fight, though. Now it is. Crap. Um, Marsden, uh, Marshman, Marshman, Marsden, Marsden, Jesus Christ, James Marsden, uh, Marshman. <laughs> It, you know there was a lot when he obviously coming across from Cage Warriors again there was a lot of hype coming into him and he's he's hard to had that wish wash win loss win loss mm. pattern Good so if we, go, well. if, yeah. if we go with that this is a win <laughs> um, but yeah I, I like watching both of these guys as you said they, they they have the potential to mix it up but both of them like standing yeah um, that's where they do their best work I suppose um, I don't know. I'm just gonna go with Marshman. I've watched Marshman a lot on on yeah. like coming up through Cage Warriors and stuff like that. So again, you've got that little bit of rooting from in that sense. So I'd like to see the Welshman get a victory here. So yeah. I will go with Marshman's decision. Yeah, I just think. Well. Uh, yeah, I remember that one in the Dana White series when Robertson got that finish with the elbows, really short range elbows. I don't know. I, I like him. I like him as a striker. I think he's good. Dana White's contenders. Yes. Yeah. Sean? Um, don't really have a strong opinion on that one. Um, mm. I do think it'll go to a decision, but and I do like Welsh people, so... <laughs> nice. I'm going to go with uh, Marshman. I wonder Beautiful. what the odds are on that, actually, Josh. Uh, and Carl Robertson is the favourite at 4-11, to 11, so Jack Martin is 15-8. to 8. That would be a 50-50 fight with yeah. that. Yeah. Like, you don't really see them fight to 6, 11-10 yeah. or something like that. Squeaky tight, there we are. Sean's a gambler. <laughs> uh, this is a fun for you. This is yes. opening the card, is it? Yeah. It is indeed. Uh, Derek Brunson takes on Israel Adesanya. Oh. Ooh. He's he's the middleweight, John Jones. Yeah. Uh, so everyone just, keeps just saying. Just showing the time there. Just oh, how much okay. time we have. Thanks, Rob. Not too much. Uh, we have a guest on the line, but let's talk about this fight because it's great. Um... This is probably the best fight on the card apart from the main event and maybe the co-main event. Just in terms of like attraction with mm. Adesanya. I think a lot of people have eyes on him. I know a lot of people were talking about Adesanya maybe getting that Chris Weidman fight. I think that's a bit too early for him too early. personally. But in this one, I think a lot of people are going the same way. I think um, they'll look at it as Derek Brunson is that guy who's going to come forward, chin up, hands yeah. down, and Adesanya is going to be able to counter him. And I do think that's the case. I think Adesanya has proved in his last two fights that he can beat the type of fighter that um, Derek Brunson is I love that we got to see him against someone like Vittori who is like Derek Brunson he'll keep coming forward taking shots but I think he has a better chin and I think he's better, better defensively um, whereas Derek Brunson will again he comes forward chin down and he can get hit chin there's up. some yeah chin up <laughs> um, there's some obviously good things that can happen there as in if you look at the Anderson Silva fight another guy who's an excellent striker really really technical I thought Derek Brunson probably should have won that fight he kind of threw it away in the end but you could see when Anderson was trying to land some shots and Derek Brunson's punches were coming from all crazy angles and he was landing even in the clinch mm -hmm. Anderson Silva had that type plum and he was just throwing shots over the top so I can definitely see something like that happening but the Vittori fight um, that Israel had and the, his last fight as well against um, Tavares I just think both of them together and what we saw in them fights I think we saw enough to say yeah he beat somebody like Brunson even his takedown defense was really good and when he got back to his feet when he got taken down and got back to his feet really really good so I gotta go Adesanya in this one I'm the same Adesanya like people see 14 and 0 and they go wow 14 and 0 he's 75 wins as a professional kickboxer with five Jeez. losses one draw this is an elite stand-up fighter yeah uh, of course fought in the likes of glory as well a different a big promotion obviously in kickboxing world but at a smart as well he's just his attacks are so composed and calm but have the strike of a cobra hitting you you know what mm. i mean he just sort of sits and charms and then bang yeah and strikes it's phenomenal how he mixes up and how he disguises his um, attacks as well. Yeah. Derek Brunson has the weird style, but he just, he fights like a giraffe. Yeah. You know, his neck is just so high up and it's all the Gambles, wrong. Gambles, isn't it? It's the, all the wrong. And the, yeah. Who was it that he basically char ran at, charged down? Was that him? Robert Whitaker? Was that when yeah, he got knocked down? There yeah. you go. But he does it. And yeah. the weird thing is, like, I remember against Machida, when they were in that weird kind of combination yeah. where they were almost in a clinch range and Machida kind of just retreated out mm. and Brunson was just a crazy punch just out of nowhere landed it and beat him so mm. like you can't see something like that happen but no, like you, you know in theory you can I just don't yeah I don't see it as in I don't see it in this fight um, but yeah Adesanya is just too clever I think just too clever yeah, yeah. yeah. 